Hi guys, how are you? I hope you are doing very good. In the, pre in the previous video, we saw that when we use the machine learning approach to do time series analysis and forecasting, the first step is to identify variables that we think are going to be useful to, to predict our output variable. And in this video, what we're going to discuss is some of these variables and we're going to try to understand why these variables are, are important. A first set of, of variables that are often useful to, to make predictions in time series analysis is powers of time, right? With powers of time, with, with terms, um, if we include the variable t, the variable time, we can capture linear trends and by including more and more degrees of, of the time, we can capture pretty complex trends. Like for instance, um, here at the bottom, you can see what kind of, of trend we may be able to capture with, with polynomials of, of degree four in, in time. As an example, let's look at the time series of the airline passengers that we discussed uh, briefly in a previous video. This is a monthly time series. And imagine we want to fit a model with one single um, input variable, with one single feature, and we use the time. Well, if we did that, um, the result would be, in this graph, a, a line, right? Because in this graph, we're plotting the dependent variable, which is x, against time. So, so if we fit this model, this would look like a line in this graph, and, and that would be our best linear prediction with, with time as, as a regressor. Another set of variables that is extremely useful in time series analysis, and, and, and we have to understand why, is what is called lagged variables, okay? So remember, we denote x sub t, the value of the variable we want to predict, the value of the, of the output variable. So the variable called x lagged one period, or also x t minus one, is the value of that same variable in the previous period, okay? So imagine in this table, we've got the time series. I've, I've made this, I've made up this time series. And uh, so the first value is one, then two, three, two, eight, nine, ten, and so on. That's the blue line here. And X lacked one period at time two, its value would be what X T is equal to in the previous period. So it always follows xt one period with with one period of, of delay that that is what lag means and the same with x lag two periods or m periods and if you see if you look at the graph uh, basically the red line is x lag one period so it follows xt with one period of delay and the green one is x lag two periods why why are these lagged variables so important? We're going to see it with an example first, and, and then we're, we'll, we'll understand it in, in general. Well, if we look at the same time series that we were looking at before, the airline passengers, and instead of using um, the time as, as the input variable, as, as a regressor, we use the same variable x lagged 12 periods, and we fit the best model with that single um, input variable, we would obtain the blue fit, which, as you can see, is way better than, than the linear prediction we, we computed before uh, using just the time. Why is that? What, what is this blue model? How come it looks so complex with one single uh, input variable. Well, if you think about it, this model we have fitted, um, what it's saying is that in order to predict the number of passengers in a certain month, let's say July, what we're going to look is, we're going, we're, what we're going to do is to look at the number of passengers exactly one year before. 
same month one year before that is 12 periods behind right because this is a monthly time series so 12 months before that's the value is the lacked variable uh, the lacked the variable lacked 12 periods so if i want to make a prediction for july this year my prediction is going to be the same value that i observed for july the previous year and i'm going to multiply that times 1.07 and add 12.67 so so that shows that this is going to be increasing because of these two numbers this one is greater than one this one is is positive and actually the fact that we're multiplying the lacked variable uh, by a number greater than one will also if you think about it it also means that these seasonal patterns will increase in in amplitude but what is really important is to realize that with lacked variables we're able to capture seasonal patterns okay so to to elaborate on this a little bit more this would be this column here would be the time series we were looking at in the previous slide and the variable lacked 12 periods would be here the, the last column here so basically for the first 12 periods we we cannot compute the lack variable because the lack variable looks at um, 12 periods in the past and, and there's no we, we don't have data for, for that and the first value of xt minus 12 occurs at t equals 13 and at that point the value is the same as x1 basically if, if 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 you want to think this way if this is if the first data point we have is january 1949 then um the value of the lacked variable uh, lacked 12 12 periods at uh, january 1950 would be the value of the original value at january one year before at january in january 1949 so that that's the the lacked variable and this lacked variable uh, which is lacked 12 months one year helps us capture in this in, in this case annual seasonal e effects okay so in general imagine that we we want to to test three different models to to make predictions all right uh, the first one is pretty simple. My prediction is just going to be the previous, the value of the previous time step. Okay, so if, if I want to predict the value for July, what I'm gonna do is to to give the value of, of, of June. Okay, the, the previous time period. The model would be the one you can see here. Another approach would be to look further in the past and maybe compute the average of the last five observations right and then my model would, would look like this another more sophisticated approach could say could be like okay so what i'm gonna do to make a prediction is to take the last two observations i've got draw a line that goes through these two observations and use that line extrapolating to make my prediction for for the future what model would that be well if, if you think about it um, what we would be doing then is in order to make a prediction we would depart from the last observation we have and we would assume that the difference between my prediction and the last observation is the same as the difference between my last observation and the previous one so so this model uh, can be interpreted as, as what we were saying, as drawing a line between the last uh, two points and using that line to make the prediction. And, and you could think uh, that once we've got these three models, we'd like to select the, one, the, the best one, the one that makes um, um, the best predictions. But if you think about it, these three models and many more are linear our linear model are regression linear regression models that are using the lacked variable so they they fit into this pattern and this pattern is just a linear regression like the one we've been studying um, 
in this course, but using as inputs the, the lagged variables. And, and by fitting a linear regression model uh, and by identifying the values of theta that minimize the, the, the sum of the squared errors, we would be automatically selecting among these uh, widely different models that we've looked at and, and many more. Like for instance, uh, another example would be this model we've got here where I'm predicting the value of, of the output variable at t using uh, the, the, the variables lacked one period, two period, and three, peri and three periods with these coefficients. This uh, can be proved that this is equivalent to fitting a parabola to the last three points of the time series and using that parabola to make the prediction for the next point. And, and this, this would be um, a linear model in, in terms of, of, of lagged variables. And even though it doesn't look like that, right? Because a parabola is, is, is not linear, but what we have to realize is that, is that this model of linear regression using lagged variables is much more general than it looks like. This is called autoregression, and it's called autoregression because basically we're um, using the same variable we want to predict as an input, but the, the values of that variable in the past, the, the lagged variables, okay? And, and since we're regressing the variable with itself, that is, that is with itself in the past, that is why it is called autoregression. So to, just to, to finish this point, well, you may wonder why, why are these coefficients, uh, in particular, the ones that are equivalent to fitting a parabola? Well, you, you can think about it and, and um, formalize it and, and solve the, the system of equations. And, and I, I did that with this piece of code in Mathematica. And, and then you can prove that these coefficients are exactly the ones that that uh, basically can be interpre interpreted as as using a parabola to to compute the the next prediction. But it's a parabola for each prediction. Okay, you you, you also gotta realize that that we would be drawing a new par parabola for each prediction we want to make. So it's not just a single parabola for the whole time series by any means, it's a, a, a different parabola of any shape, basically, for each prediction I, I want to make. So it's it's a very general model. That That's what I would like us to realize with, with this uh, discussion, that autoregression uh, comprises a very wide range of different models that do not like do not look linear and they don't look like they're gonna fit that this this equation at, at first sight but when you think about it they they do um, also in the machine learning approach we're not forced to use lacked variables only by any means we can use any variable that we we may consider useful to to make our predictions and in particular we may want to use products of time and lacked variables to account for multiplicative effects like to account for for maybe the fact that the importance of a certain lacked variable increases or decreases with, with time we can also use something that are called uh, periodic attributes, like categorical uh, variables that indicate whether it's a weekend or not, that could be very useful, for instance, to predict the traffic in a city. Certainly the traffic in a city is usually much lower at, at weekends, and, and therefore to, to build a model to predict the traffic, it would be very useful to include a a categorical variable that indicates whether it's it's weekend or not and and we can also include pretty much any other variable there's other variables that are called overlay data which are not periodic but can be very useful and an example may may be the best way to understand this imagine we want to predict 
uh, how many pizzas we're gonna sell certainly it would be very useful to know the dates of the champions league matches okay we know the calendar in advance we have that information so we can include a variable that indicates whether a certain day there is uh, a champions league match or not and certainly that variable is going to be very useful to predict pizza sales so with this we conclude this video and uh, i would like to emphasize that basically um, what we've learned in this video is that auto regression is a much more general kind of model or type of model that it may look at first sight and i would like you to understand the the importance of lacked variables and how can lacked variables can capture seasonal effects okay so thanks a lot for watching and i very much look forward to seeing you in our next video see you later bye bye